It's day two at the Wooden Boat Show in Mystic, Connecticut, and we've had an awful lot of response to our sport dory, and it's been a lot of fun showing people the dory and going over different things and answering questions. But there's a lot of other displays here and a lot of other boats to see, a lot of boats that I'm really interested in. So let's take a spin around the grounds here and see what we see. Well, now here's a little beetle cat that really attracts me. I've always loved these little boats. They're really got, for a boat this size, they've got tremendous amount of space in them. They don't have seats. You sit right in the bottom and lean up against the Coleman's and uh, they've done a beautiful beautiful job on this nice white oak you know beautiful canvas job you know nice seam work flawlessly smooth hull excellent excellent quality boats a pleasure to see a little beetle like this at a boat uh, uh, at a show like this look at the builders tag beetle cat number 2350 2350 they've built of these and it's got a nice little uh, provision to put a, a, a canvas over it and snap it on to here so when it's raining at night it doesn't fill up with water nice little traveler beautiful little gaff rig very simple to sail really really nice little boat very very pretty very fair well here's Nelly Nelly really attracts me look at that a nice gaff rig sloop with a nice big long bow sprit and uh, I think it's got fish holes in it. I think this is probably an oyster uh, boat or an oyster smack or something like that. I'm not really positive what you would call it, but look at the beam on it. Wow. I, I, th I think it's fantastic. You know, that boat looks really original to me, like it's never been rebuilt or anything like that, too. So, I mean, I'm not positive of any of those things, but uh, it really, really attracts me. I love the round stern, like I say, the beam and the shear, and uh, I like the fact that it's a work boat, you know? I like work boats. So, uh, when I see a work boat, I'm really attracted, more so than even a yacht with beautiful finishes and all that. All of that doesn't mean all that much to me. I like the form and the usefulness of a boat, and this rope right here is, is something that uh, I think that there should be a lot more boats like this right here. One thing I just noticed that I hadn't noticed before when I looked at this boat, I believe this boat is a centerboard boat because it's got a little block and falls right here on the top of the house and it kind of has a cable that comes around the forward end of the companionway slides and right straight down to the center of the boat. So I think what that is is a centerboard trunk. We're not looking at the set of plans of the boat out of the water, so I'm speculating to a certain degree, but I think that's what it is. And like I said, I think it's a commercial boat and these were like either oyster holes or fish holes of some sort so here's another thing that interests me about this design right here that i hadn't noticed before and that is is that the helm uh, can be operated from the companionway you know you can stand inside the companionway it's kind of like having a dodger of sorts and uh, you know in the winter months i'm sure that's highly appreciated by whoever it is that needs to use a boat like this like I said before, this boat really attracts me a lot. It always has, and uh, sometime I'll get to see it out of the water. Now here's another little boat that interests me right here. This is, uh, uh, I think, either Norwegian style or some sort of a Viking style. It's got this radical sheer to it and the stem head sticking way up, stern post sticking way up. It's got a lot of bronze reinforcement in it and different things like that. And it's clinker built, lap strake, you know, with like dory style frames in it. But uh, it does not, I'm sure that this boat does not have a dory style bottom. I think it's got a keel in it. So a little bit different than a dory, but uh, still a long slender boat with similar uses, fishing, nice sailing rig in it, rowable, sailable, nice looking boat. So here's a little fleet of boats on the beach right here, all of which are quite a bit different, you know. Some of them are made of plywood, plywood lap strake. This is a nice little skiff with a rocket bottom here because uh, you need that rocket bottom in a skiff to get the boat to carry when you're rowing it. And uh, nice little design, you know. It's got a lot of room in it compared to a dory, but they're not as good in the surf as a dory is. These are like yacht tenders, really, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I can see that the... Uh, this one's probably got an offset sailing rig in it because I see it's got a little centerboard trunk and then a hole in the seat off to one side so that the mast wouldn't be in the center of the boat. It would be off to one side so that when you walk around the mast, the boat doesn't want to heel over, you know. And uh, so they're all different. You know, here's a little three plank lap strake uh, glued or stitch and glue double ended 
dory, I guess you might call it. Another little skiff over here with a cross plank bottom. And uh, that's a pretty little skiff actually, lap straight sides with quite a flared side back aft. And a uh, little dagger board trunk and a sailing rig. Real nice, nice little yacht tender right there. A couple of Gloucester gulls over here, plywood, you know, uh, uh, dories really. And uh, I'd built a couple of those years ago. Great little boats. I mean, they don't have the, the classy style maybe of some other boats, but they're still very, very useful. Now here's a little Doug Highland built uh, Peapod, double-ended. And uh, these are beautiful little boats. Many, many people decide to build these boats at home in their garage because they're small enough and yet you can actually use it for almost a whole family really because they hold a lot of weight and you can see how beamy the boat is compared to the length of it so uh you know they're a real nice handling boat and a nice little rowing boat fantastic little tender like i said before and uh you know he's uh, built some beautiful oars for it here it's got a lot of like strong features little in whale and uh, this has got an open gunnel to it so when you tip the boat the water will run right out of it you know some of these things i'm trying to consider on my dory now because uh there's probably five or six different ways that you can make the gunnels and uh this is just one of them so i have to consider all the different ways it's got a two-piece breast hook in it joined together in the middle i think this is douglas fir and the gunnels and the in whales are douglas fir and of course the boat is plywood really it's got a number of bent frames in it because it has a little centerboard trunk in in it so um, there's a sailing rig I'm sure there's a little mast step right here a little hole for the rig and uh, that'd be a pleasure to sail and row for sure well my new friend Bill here has been kind enough to allow us to row this little peapod so this is kind of this will be a pleasure because I'm looking forward to doing some rowing in the next few months and I can't remember rowing in actually a number of years really so so this is fun and uh it's a fine rowing little boat really is hi there <laughs> yeah look at this nice handling set of oars and I think he's right about these oars they feel the right length to me and they're spooned and uh, this is a different uh, look than I've seen down here in Mystic. I've never been out in a boat in Mystic. It's nice to get around to looking at all the boats from the water here. You know, I love that little oyster smack or whatever the world that thing is, Nelly. Now these are spoon doors, so when they when you're at the end of the stroke, they tend to feather themselves. In other words, you don't you don't bring the oar up out of the water like like say like this, you bring the oar up out of the water with a feather like that, so it it it, uh, it doesn't drag when you when you release the oar from the water. Now there's a beautiful little swamp scot right over there, very similar to the dory that we're building. Very similar to the dory we're building. Nice little varnished launch over there. I'd never seen that one. Satin doll. That's quite spiffy. Beautiful catch here, maybe 36 feet or something like that. Don't have any idea what design it is, but it's pretty. It's something to see the seaport right from the water here like this. This is really, really nice. And what a beautiful day it's, it's become here. You know, the, the fog is starting to go away, getting a little bit brighter. It's beautiful. It's nice to be out on the water, it is. Well, that was a lot of fun, and uh, you know, rowing is a really good time. It's great exercise, fun to do. Can't wait to row my own dory at the beach in maybe a little bit rougher water. That'll be really a good time. So, so uh, I guess we're gonna pull into the little dock right here. I'm gonna go into the other side. Well, that's all right. I was gonna go on the other side, but that's all right. All right. Let's ship the oars. Set them right inside on the seats here. And I'm gonna make my way right over the bow here. Well, Bill, thank you very much. I appreciate it. It was fun to go for a little row. Yeah, it and, uh, rows well. 
Oh, it rose really well, yeah. yeah. I've always liked the oars to almost cross each other a little tiny bit. Yeah, these cross, you know, you know maybe yeah. that much or so. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. just enough to jam your thumb once. <laughs> right. Well, it's nice to see that people are still interested in building these boats, you know, yep. especially people our age. Right. You know? <laughs> you know, I don't know how old you are, but I'm 69 years old and um, I still got to build boats. I can't stand it. Right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice so, again. Thank you again. You're welcome. I know. Now look at this, here's a bank story. This looks like an original bank story. And one of the reasons I can tell it's an original dory is because it's got tree crooks in it for the dory frames rather than having the ones that terminate with the plates right here. And the other thing I do have to say about it is that uh, this is always one of the things I've never liked about the boats is to have these tree crooks in here because they're quite a bit in the way. And then it's got these straps that go across on the bottom right here. And it gets a little difficult uh, to bail the boat because when you're trying to bail the boat, all the water's kind of over to one side and you can't really bail the boat across the boat. It's like a fore and aft sort of a arrangement. And these things bang into your bailing box. So, you know, I think a lot of these boats actually used a pump in order to get the water out of them because uh, it was so hard to bail. But uh, that's just that one reason why on my dory, I wanted uh, a bottom without anything athwart ships in it so that I could bail it fore and aft with a bailing box quite quickly and easily. Look at these spars, these spars right here have to be for the Mayflower right here. Look at the size of this spar right here. Wow, and I mean, and they're in pretty good shape. So they've got them stored in here for a purpose. And I think it's that they're gonna reuse them. They don't need to build these over again. These are gonna go back in the boat. So uh, really, really nice. Hey, there's a future yeah. ship right, right there. That's right. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> Look at the smile. Look at the smile. Watch your show all the time. <laughs> Thanks. Well, here we go right here. This is the Mayflower right here. And it's going uh, through a total rebuild. Look at this. This is really spectacular. It's got some large wood in this boat and a huge amount of effort. Wow. Look at the height of the captain's quarters. It must be fantastic to be up there when this boat is underway. Uh, really something else. You know, maybe we'll get a chance to even get aboard this boat when it's uh, completed or something like that. But, uh, you know, Mystic's been on this rebuild for quite some time and they got a ways to go, but uh, they continue and uh, it's great to see it going on, it really is. So I'm looking at the starboard side here from back aft and uh, looking at the size of those planks. They look like they're like two and a half by eight or somewhere in there. And uh, you know, that's some healthy, healthy planking right there. And it's, I can see that it's put on with uh, uh, trunnels. So, uh, you know, it's trunneled to the framing like wooden pegs rather than any kind of metal fastenings. And you need quite a bit of heavy framework in there in order to accomplish that because the trunnel's got a large diameter as compared to uh, any kind of a metal fastening. So, you know, that's, uh, they're trying to keep it uh, traditional here in the way they go about it and they're doing it. Now we're standing up forward looking at the Mayflower and look at the size of the boat up here. You know, I, I mean the size of the framing, look at that. You know, big, heavy, maybe eight by, by eight framing, you know, solid oak. It's got just a heavy, heavy bow for plowing through the sea. It doesn't have any fair lines to it whatsoever. A fair line boat is actually slower than a boat like this. A boat like this has got this, what they call a bluff bow that breaks the, the waves and breaks the sea. So, uh, you know, as, as fat as a boat like this might look, they move pretty good. Throughout the whole project, probably 65% of the ship will be brand new. Right. But what you're seeing here, this oak, I'm sure you saw up on Ernestina too, because I know Herman got them a whole bunch of that Danish oak. Yeah. And that's what this is. Sure, and I knew that, yeah. See, no knots. No. No defects in the whole thing. The planking, it's all three inches thick. You can see the trunnels. Yeah, I see trunnels. Now I did get a trunnel. So that's what they did in 1957 when they built the ship. Yeah. Uh, they kind of did a belt and suspender thing. And so the holes and the bungs, we've got seven inch square section galvanized spikes. Yeah. And then mixed in with the wedged black locust trunnels. Sure. Well, you can see a string that's wrapped around the framing right up here. 
and uh, that is to actually fair the framing. You know, sometimes if you had one frame a little bigger than the others, you might take a, a little rounded plane and plane a little notch in it, or whatever it is that you would have to do. We used to use like a, you know, what they would call a line ads, which was a rounded ads, and just clip a little slot across it. And then you'd use some other kind of equipment, like a dubbing ads or, or something, to dub that particular frame down fair with the others. But there's, there's different ways of going about it. But that's what that is. That's not to do with lining off the hull. That has to do with fair in the hull. Exactly. Black Locust Trunnel, one of the fasteners, trunnel or tree nail that we're using as part of the fastening system on Mayflower 2. And you can see we have uh, some signatures here. We've had people as part of the uh, fundraising effort to pay for pay Mystic Seaport for this restoration. People are actually signing our trunnels. What we do, you can see here, we drive them in through the plank as a fastener and then we cut them off and actually drive a wedge in to splay out the end and help hold it. Of course, once the ship swells up, it ain't going anywhere anyway. They're black locusts, which is some of the hardest and heaviest woods that there is. And uh, there's really, really a need to use black locusts because anything, it's presenting the end grain, you know, to the water. And what would happen if the, if the paint were to be rubbed off one of these, you know, uh, and it wasn't black locusts, it would probably get worm damage in the trunnels faster than the planking. So that's one of the reasons why they use uh, black locusts, and uh, it's some quality wood right there. So here you can kind of see where they've driven a wedge in through to split and splay the end of the trunnel and help hold it in place. Again, just a, another black locust wedge that they drive in afterwards. And uh, the, other th the other thing you could say about that is, is that uh, you notice that the wedges are athwart ships because if the wedges were longitudinal, they would tend to want to split the plank when you drive the wedge in. So they've put the, uh, the wedges or the cuts for the wedges athwart ships and made certain they were put in that way. Very that way you have less though. problem with the, yeah, with the splitting of the planking. Yeah. Up, up, up. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> Linseed oil and turpentine mix. Sure. Trying to preserve the wood and of course these big timbers trying to slow down the drying oh, as sure. much as we can slow Abs down absolutely. the drying. Absolutely, absolutely. So you're looking up overhead here now and you look at the ads marks in this deck timber right here. I mean that was all done by hand with an ads. It wasn't stuffed through a planer or anything like that. That's done the way it was done before. And you know, and I think it looks great. And, uh, you know, it, it does, it's all it needs. It doesn't need to be perfectly smooth, you know. It is what it is, and uh, that's perfect right there. One of the things to note is that even though we're using big ship saws to get close to the fit, yeah, then the, even the only way to get the final fit for all these mortise and tenon joints and the proper camber, to, you got to do it by hand you, anyway. you got to do it by hand, sure. Yeah. So, still, even 400 years later, nothing... Uh, Still using a chisel and a pan plane. Right. Well, we, we really appreciate it, and I thank you very much for it. It's been, uh, it's been uh, quite enlightening to see all these different things about the boat, and uh, the scale of it really impresses me, and uh, your knowledge impresses me of it. You know, uh, really, really does. So. Uh, really appreciate having you aboard Mayflower. Well, thank you very Lou much, and, and uh, uh, Plymouth Plantation. Looks forward to seeing you again soon. Good, and we're hoping to get back again. Good. We would like to get back again, maybe do a little bit more, and some maybe when some of the men are here doing a little bit of action. That's I think a great be, idea. I think yeah. it'd be fantastic. We got 30 guys working. Yeah, on I think ship. it'd be That's great to, to see the uh, the hustle and bustle of it. Look at this! It's above the houses, above the above the buildings. Yeah. Above, it's amazing. Yeah. It really is. So here's some knees that were in the Mayflower apparently at one time already and cut right out because you can see the rivets, you know, where they were riveted in place, and uh, you know. Uh, what I'm reading here is they're either uh, Quercus alba or Quercus virginiana. Now the Quercus virginiana is a, a live oak species that grows down south and uh, Quercus alba grows up north here. So yeah, I'm sure it's one or the other, but I can't really identify it. But uh, look at the size of those things. Those are to stop the boat from racking. Keeps the angle from the side of the boat to the deck to exactly the same. You know, they have hanging knees and lodging knees, and these are either one or the other, but I believe these are hanging knees.
Now here I'm looking at a Viking longship. I think she's like 114 feet long or 35 meters and uh, lap straight construction. I think this boat just came over last year. It's pretty spectacular as well. This isn't something you'd see in the United States of America by any stretch of the imagination. And uh, it's riveted construction, uh, lap straight like I said. It's got a lot of detail in it. One of these radical shears to it. I'm not sure exactly what that's all for, but uh, you know, it's got something to do with the uh, sea and also something to do with style. And it's this beautiful dragon figurehead at the top of the stem. And, uh, you know, it's got quite a monstrous rig in it. You know, despite what people think, I think this boat here would uh, really move out pretty well. Not a, not a pokey slow boat whatsoever. So, pretty interesting boat. Well, we just had a great time at the Wooden Boat Show here, and I've seen a lot of things that really interested me. A lot of really, really spectacular work and uh, wonderful people. Uh, it's been enjoyable. Every aspect of it's been enjoyable, and uh, I've learned a lot, and I think some people learned a few things from me. So, you know, uh, all I can say is uh, see you next year. <laughs>